Hey everyone, I have a basic Next.js app that I bootstrapped with Create Next app, and we're going to add Tina to it with the init command. So the first thing we're going to do is just stop our dev server here and just run npx at tina cms slash cli at latest init. And this is going to add all of the files we need to bootstrap our Tina CMS site. Um, in this scenario, we're using Next.js. Uh, we'll use Yarn for our package manager, and we're already using TypeScript, so we'll use TypeScript for our Tina config as well. This is going to add some files and install any dependencies, and it might take a bit of a minute or so. All right, our Tina CMS has been initialized, so let's run our dev server and take a look at what it looks like. So if we run Yarn dev, we can see that the Yarn dev command has been changed to run Tina CMS dev, which starts a local Tina CMS server and indexes content from the local file system, and then it runs next dev as a sub process. If we go over to our site and go to slash admin slash index.html, we can see it loads the Tina CMS admin interface and it has even added an example collection for us. So it has a post collection here, which it has created automatically for us. If we go into the post collection, we can click on the Hello World blog, and since we're using Next.js, this will open up contextual editing, uh, and it also set up a demo site, uh, a demo page for us that we can edit. So let's just edit um, some text here, and maybe, and if we hit save, and go back over to our editor, we can see if we open up this Hello World file, it has changed to the new content we just added. Awesome. So that's how you can run init and get a site running up locally with Tina CMS init. Now let's update our Next.js site so we can edit existing content. If we go back over here and go to the homepage, we can see that this is just a static site and all of this content is hard coded, but let's make it editable with Tina CMS. The first thing we're going to do is go open up our tina slash config file. And if we go down to our schema and under schema, we go to collections. We're going to add a new collection and we'll call it pages. Name page label pages and path content slash pages and Let's make the format JSON. We can also add fields to this collection and let's just add one field. We'll give it a name of subtitle, label subtitle, and we'll give it a type of string. And let's just fix our formatting errors here and hit save. And this will automatically update our Tina CMS site. If we go over to slash admin slash index.html, We can go over to our sidebar here and we can see we now have a pages collection. Let's create a new page here and we'll just give it a title of edit me and we'll give it a file name of home page. We'll hit save. If we go back over to our editor, we can see it has created a homepage.json file with the subtitle edit me. Great, so our content is all set up. Let's go over to our application and make it editable. If we go to our source slash app here and go to page, you can see we're just rendering the home page. All right, if we open up our home page here, we can see it is just static content, and we're going to make this content editable with Tina CMS. The first thing we're going to do is make the home page receive some props. It is going to receive a data prop, and that's going to be the data we use to render up the content. And this is going to be page query. And the next bit that we're going to get is the variables, which this is just going to have type page query variables. And we're also going to receive a query and that's gonna be a type string. And why we need all of these props is so that we can pass them to the use Tina CMS hook, which that will rehydrate all of the data and make it so that we can live edit our content. If we go back to the page here, we can see that we get an error now, and that's because we are not passing the correct props. We can get the content by uh, using the generated client. 
So if we do client dot queries dot page, and we're going to give the relative path of homepage.json. And you can see this has data, variables, and query. So we can pass that here, data, results. Oh. So what we need to do is actually make this an async function and await the client result. Awesome. Now if we go to our homepage, instead of rendering out this get started by editing source slash app, we are going to get props.data.page and this structure comes from the GraphQL response and we'll go dot subtitle. Awesome. Now if we go over back to our homepage here, we can see it says edit me. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. We can also go to slash admin slash index.html. And if we go over to the sidebar here, we can see, oh, it looks like there's nothing on our page. So to enable admin editing, we are going to use the use Tina hook. And in production, this use Tina hook doesn't do anything. It just passes the data right through. But whenever you're in edit mode, it will enable the interaction where you can edit here and it will update automatically on your site. So we're just going to call it use Tina and this is why we need the data, props.data, query, props.query, and variables, props.variables. And that's why we needed the query and the variables here. And we can grab the data there. And now we're getting another error. Use state only works in client components. So we do need to make this a client component because it does need to update uh, with React state. So we'll just do use client. And that should get rid of that error. And instead of doing props.data.subtitle, we'll just change that to data. And there we go. Now you can see the forms loading on our page. And if we edit this, it updates automatically on our site. So we used init to bootstrap a Tina CMS app, and we set up a basic form and live editing with Next.js. I hope this was helpful, and please feel free to reach out on Discord if you have any questions. Thanks.